Maslow, one of the things that he noticed about self-actualized people is that that they had in common in his good human being notebooks and in what he ended up publishing out of them, his, his theories, was that the self-actualized people have frequent um, spiritual experiences. He was one of the first psychologists to kind of write about the spirituality. So they have uh, frequent uh, intense, life-changing kind of spiritual experiences, gestalt experiences, where things came together for them. This is something they all talked about, these people that they consider self-actualized, that set them apart. Uh, Just, I, I know we're rushing through this because, you know, it takes us something. But I want you to start thinking about this question. What did he miss? <laughs> Yeah, we saw that. <laughs> um, so did his hierarchy of needs come from the TP designs? Well, he never admitted it. It's not in any of his books. Um, we haven't met anybody that's told us, you know, that they heard directly from Maslow's mouth and you know, writing and the kind of correspondence that his hierarchy of needs is based on TB designs. But like Jane said, it's really safe to say he was observing. Um, when I asked her about this, did you ever know, did Maslow ever talk to you about this? And she said, well, you know, really I didn't talk to Maslow that much after we left Six Sigma because I didn't care, care much. She, in her words, she said, I don't think he published anything of any significance. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> um, because of her opinion. But uh, can we say that he did uh, his hierarchy of needs from TP designs? I don't know. I think it's I think it's safe to put it as, as a def as a definite possibility. But his idea of what's on top of that hierarchy, that self actualization, and how you get there, is it safe to say that he he gleaned that or a portion? portion of that with his six weeks at six august sent, sent him down that road I would say definitely I would say the six six again to be the people of six ago were the model for him his first model of what it is to be self actualized in down a community of such persons. His other big influence on Western society um, was synergy. He would what he would call synergy. They took this term from Benedict. Benedict's researchers came back and they all had their notes and they all did their publications. And then she started a lecture series on cultural synergy, she called it. She grabbed that term from the medical community, meaning the, the whole is not uh, just the sum of its parts. Right? And <coughs> Benedict did a lecture series, and she never published uh, this idea of, of cultural synergy. But Maslow attended that lecture series and uh, took copious notes and later published it. Uh, gave her credit to publish, publish what she had talked about in that lecture series, about what is cultural synergy. And I don't know whether or not uh, her ideas of synergy had stemmed from those researchers that she had sent out to the Blackfoot communities. I think it's, a, you know, in the timeline of things, that's how it appears to be. Um, but, but certainly Maslow's appreciation of this concept of synergy uh, is very strongly connected to what he saw in Six and Gun, in the transcript, in Teddy Yellowfoot, uh, in the way that things were done. And, the idea of cultural synergy, Benedict said you could have low synergy in a society or you could have high synergy. And if you had high synergy, what it meant is that every individual you act that you did on behalf of the community would come back to benefit you. Um, if you acted just for yourself, it would, it would have negative repercussions for you in a high synergy system. If you were in a low synergy system, just the opposite. You act for yourself, you, uh, you uh, achieve in that society. If you act on behalf of the group, there's not, not much going on. Um, 
So <laughs> they began uh, uh, trying to rate different societies on the basis of, of their synergy. And Maslow, you know, he still had monkeys playing in his head too. <laughs> he was relating these to, to uh, uh, the primates as well. I think he, he talked about the people at Six at Gun in his paper being like, like the chimpanzees of uh, the human world and the Germans being like the baboons <laughs> in terms of their synergy. And later in his career, uh, he would make a big, a big impact enlightenment management with this notion of synergy. And if you take in management uh, today, I'm sure you've run into this. This slide is a picture of uh, part of a slideshow that we were talking to people in Poland one time. They wanted to take some of our Ghana studies courses from Red Crow as distance learning courses. And they had a business model for how we could work together. And in, this is part of their business model. <laughs> synergy system that you know, we would use in a fellow's well, Did you know that that idea of using synergy as an organizational principle originated or was you know, sparked by Abraham Maslow visiting one of the communities and what he saw uh, already in place uh, here. Maslow thought, I can bring these, uh, this synergy or a business um, or any kind of an organization could benefit, uh, could make itself more uh, synergic, synergetic. And uh, so he started working as a consultant. He was going out, around to different businesses and uh, basically, you know, looking at how they ran their business, if they were having problems, if they were having employee retention issues, or things weren't going well for them, he'd go into their business as a consultant and look at it in terms of synergy. And he'd say, okay, you know, things like, you guys need to throw out your time clocks and your employees need to be more part of the planning they do. You gotta, you know, you gotta have everybody have um, ownership in this company. And he would give them all kinds of ideas. I'm mean, just rushing this because you know, we've got three minutes now. <laughs> but uh, he would give them all kinds of ideas on how to improve their business by making it more synergic. Um, of course, he misses something is that you can't take a part of society and really, you know, uh, change the synergy just in that part and, and expect it to work because you, it's in a context of a whole uh, bunch of other things. And so, whether certainly, I've never seen anything in Western society, in my experience, that parallels this kind of synergy that you, you find even still today in black. Maslow saw in 1938 was, was entirely, you know, um, things were still much more in place than they are today. Do you want to close it off? I'll turn my back to <laughs> This is the work that we're doing today. When does the past become the present? And when does the present become the future? When we visit these sites. Maslow never thought that the people that he went to are going to, most of them are born there, and they're going to die there, like their ancestors did. They were tied to place in a way that he wasn't. And maybe he didn't have the capability to see that aspect of it. I don't know. When we presented this at the University of Montana, some of the people reacted as though we were belittling uh, Maslow. I think Maslow honored us. But what we're saying is he could have done more. And he did a lot. My God, what would have happened if he had stayed there longer, if he could have this kind of impact that's still being realized today? 